multi-level data and hypotheses are increasingly common across a number of fields and a number of disciplines. So these would be cases where group level factors might predict individual outcomes. So we can talk about a specific example from the education literature, and that is what predicts student test scores. So one commonly cited factor is student SES or parental background. So something like parent education or parent income is a good predictor of student test scores. These would vary by each student, of course, um, but we may think that there are some other predictors that would help us determine what might affect student test scores. And these may not be individual level factors. This could be, for example, a school level factor. So would we expect a difference between urban, suburban, and rural schools? We may expect that the suburban students would do better. In this case, however, we're not talking about individual level characteristics. We're talking about the characteristics of students in the, of every student in that school. And this creates some unique opportunities and indeed challenges for calculating these models. So instead of using a standard OLS regression, we have a problem. We can't use those models because these, one of the assumptions of a standard regression OLS is that um, all of the observations are going to be independent from one another. But instead, if we think of students in the same school, we would actually expect them to be pretty similar. Um, even if we account for you know, location, for example, or even individual SES, we'd still expect there to be some similarities that we haven't accounted for. And in doing this, it's going to bias our estimates if we use a standard regression. Instead, using a multi-level model allows us another opportunity. So what it will do is, at level one, estimate all of those individual level factors. So in this case, we have one equation in which student or parent SES is predicting outcomes, test scores. And then we'd also have another equation being measured simultaneously at level two, in which the location of the school, whether it's rural, urban, or, or suburban, is also used to predict whether uh, to predict student outcomes. And in doing so, we can gain some information both at, at level one and level two while using accurate estimation techniques. Uh, we'll get into the more specific estimation of these models in further modules, but before going any farther, there are some unique advantages to using multi-level models other than what I previously mentioned. One, for example, is that because we're pooling all of the individual level data, if there is smaller numbers across the schools, uh, we can actually pull this data so it won't be um, as taxing on the estimation. So for example, if we're interested in um, particularly how this relationship is for Southeast Asian students, and we don't have as many in our sample in some schools as in others, this will allow us to pull all of those observations and still estimate this um, fairly accurately. In contrast, there are some issues that arise with using multi-level models in that because we are simultaneously estimating these two separate equations, we need to make sure that the number of observations is adequate for estimation at both levels. So this would mean that if we're estimating uh, location, for example, of schools, we need to make sure that we had enough schools to accurately estimate the effects of location. So if we only had, for example, Three or, four, three or four schools, we wouldn't have a large enough N to accurately estimate this level two equation. And in many cases, it's actually better for there to be a larger level two N than there is for a level one N. So it'd be better to have um, 100 doctors with 10 patients each than 10 doctors with 100 patients each. But again, we'll get into the specifics of the models and what's necessary for estimation in further modules. These Models are not without controversy, and we'll discuss the details in, in further modules. So we'll first begin by talking about random intercept models, then move on to random slope models, and then finally talk about some extensions to other sorts of dependent variables, such as logit models and ordinal logit models. Mm -hmm.